Do you remember when Colin first pulled a string and it made a cup of tea and he was just lying in bed and the strings weren't all through the house and then he pulled the strings and it made a cup of tea in the kitchen? I was thinking maybe we could make a robot tea maker with like robot arms and everything, but people like mechanics so the simple approach probably is going to do better. Marble machines are popular at the moment, aren't they? Have you seen Ivan Miranda's marble machine clock and the other one from JBV Creative? So I thought I'll make a marble machine, but instead of being a clock, it's going to make a cup of tea. This is really the mic, by the way. Do you like it? It makes me feel like I'm talking on the telephone. It's not a very good mic, so don't listen too hard. You haven't really thought this through that much. I've basically done some design about how it's going to move the cup on with a couple of seesaws, and I haven't designed the rest. There's a big gap in the middle, but I think it needs to be really tall so that we get lots of like gravity for the marble. So I'm just going to do it as I go and hope for the best. Way well, I do most projects, really. So I'm just going to print all the stuff and then we'll build the bits I've designed already and then we'll work out what to do as we go as we work out the run of the marble and what it needs to do. Just a quick ad from my 3D printing sponsor. Thanks to Lulzbot 3D Printers for supporting my channel with 3D printers. I've got quite a few 3D printers and it really helps with big projects like this to get all the parts done in time. Thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project, you can now get 10% off at 3dfuel.com with my special code and link and I'll get a small commission. I'm going to use some V-slot extrusion for this project to make the base of the thing and as usual we're using some drop-in T-nuts on M4 bolts which just turn into that slot there and hold it together. So I've made a frame with some 3D printed corners which is going to make the base of the whole machine. Another accessory for V-slot extrusion is V-wheels, which you'll notice have a kind of V-profile on, and that fits into the V-slot, so we can make a slider that moves really, really freely. That, of course, is going to be the slider for the cup, so it goes through the production line of making the tea, and that fits right on there. It moves pretty freely, because the whole thing's just going to be driven by gravity, with a ball bearing or a marble coming down, so it needs to be pretty free-moving. Yep, it's another company that helped me with the project, thanks to Simply Bearings for the bearings of this project. There are loads of bearings in this because I need things to be really free moving, because I already said it's just going to be driven by gravity, so any friction we need to get rid of really. I've got these rotating things which have a bearing in the middle on each side, just like a skateboard wheel, and also one on the ends. These are all cascaded so they don't touch each other, and these are going to be the pushers that push the cup along. As the marble or ball bearing moves through the machine, it's going to turn each of these in order, as well as do other stuff, we've got about eight stages actually, and that's going to push the cup all the way through the machine. The bearings on the end there hit this angle piece so it should roll off and decelerate the cup. As I said at the beginning, the whole thing's quite tall, so I've got this piece of aluminium box section fixed on a bracket, and that's over a metre tall. Yep, it's quite a tall stick, and it's quite wobbly at the moment as well. It's quite tall because we need the gravity to sort of convey the force to go sideways at the bottom and do all the other things, like put the water in and stir the tea and all that stuff. So uh, for now, I haven't really planned this. I've kind of drawn some things out. I've printed some of them. So we're going to start with putting a couple of stages together here and see if we can convey the force to the bottom. The first part is a seesaw, which sort of tips over as the ball rolls down and pulls a string, basically. And I've also got a piece that feeds it, which sits before it. The parts I've printed are on here. It's quite wobbly, but there's going to be more sticks going up and like more scaffolding between them and stuff. So eventually it won't be so bad. For now, we've just got one stage that works, though. At the end of the seesaw, of course, there's a curved piece and a hole, so the ball can't just fly off into the air. It has to go down the seesaw before it can exit. So that seesaw needs to pull the cup along to the first stage. So I've got this thing with multiple notches so I can put the string in different positions to experiment and get it perfectly right. And that string goes all the way down and it goes round a pulley and then of course it goes to that pusher so that when it unwinds it pushes the tea along. So there's the seesaw pushing the cup along to the first stage to make the cup of tea. So let's just chuck the ball bearing in and see what happens. It goes quite slowly, but it pulls the cup along and it seems to work alright. Let's try a bigger ball bearing. This is 50mm in diameter. Yeah, that's much better. It looks like we're on the right track for making a cup of tea, but now it's time to put the water in. So I've made a cradle for the jug to fit in which fits like that and it tips over with some bearings in there again so it's nice and free moving and then of course that's going to tip hot water into the cup. So I've got another seesaw with another string which apart from overshooting the cup seems to work alright. So the whole ball run works if I put this massive ball bearing in here but this 
is definitely going to slop boiling water all over the place because it moves quite quickly. So we need some sort of limiter that's going to make that move down much slower and gently pour the water. But I'm going to come back and solve that at the end along with how we make it brew tea for two minutes. The next stage is slightly different. I thought we'd try a different mechanism, which is this round curved mechanism that takes the ball round. In the middle of that, there's a kind of paddle or a wiper that's fitted onto some bearings. So as the ball comes round, it pushes that round and the middle of that's a pulley that can pull another string. So I've attached another string to that. So as it goes round, you can see it pulling that string. I've also got a magnet that holds it in place so it doesn't wander off by itself. And that string goes round another pulley all the way down to the bottom, round a bit of stainless steel, and onto the next pusher. So as I push it round, it pulls the cup onto the next stage. I really like this mechanism actually, because if we change the angle of this and make it more shallow, then we can make the ball go more slowly, and that makes the wiper go more slowly, so then we probably could have used that so it didn't slop the water instead of the previous stage, but I really want to fix this one now, so we're going to leave it as it is. Now we need to put the tea bag in. The next stage is a kind of elevator, or a lift, if you're in England which has got a plunger, the ball goes in and the lift goes down and it's got a plunger on the outside which plunges the tea bag into the cup. So that's a bit of wire attached with the tea bag on the end. So as it's down, it plunges into the cup and when it's finished, it springs back up again and takes the tea bag out. And we'll have some sort of door on the elevator so we can brew the tea for some amount of time. But before we carry on with that, it's time for a quick ad from the video's sponsor, which is PV Case. Now, PV Case is a next generation AutoCAD based piece of PV software focused on automation and accuracy. It allows you to simulate the actual location of a solar plant from the earliest stages of planning, incorporating 3D topographical data points. So, PV Case is the ideal choice for companies undertaking large commercial and industrial projects, as well as utility scale plants. The software really is intuitive and has streamlined processes to help reduce the learning curve and improve productivity. Features include everything from the prototyping stage, electrical design, stringing, shading and terrain analysis, and automatic generation of construction documentation. So PV Case really does enable engineers and designers to take the project all the way through from its initial conception to the procurement phase. This really is an end-to-end -end approach which saves time and reduces errors. It's streamlined so you don't have to switch between tools or other software platforms. Other features include slope analysis, piling and collision analysis, automatic topographical 3D cabling, side-by-side -side design comparison and rapid 3D building preparation. Try PVKs for free by following the link in the video description. Right, let's get back to building the next stages of the tea making machine. The next stage is another one of those curved pieces and again that's got a pulley and another string that pulls the cup round. And after that we've got another two of those at the back of this with a chute in the middle. So those are going to do the extra two stages of pouring milk in and then finally moving the cup out of the machine. So there's the first one pulling a pulley just above that milk jug that's going to put milk in. That seems to be working pretty well. And then the final one actually pulls the cup along so it exits the machine and you can drink the tea. Well that's most of the main mechanics together, but let's see if the thing runs all the way through if I put this massive ball bearing in. Well it looks like something went wrong because the cup's still over here and it should be over here. So it looks like those pushers are all moving at the wrong time, probably because the vibrations in the machine are causing them to creep, so the cup gets stuck halfway along. Yep, looks very much like they just move around with that massive ball bearing smashing its way through the machine. So instead of this 50mm ball bearing, we're going to use the slightly smaller 40mm ball bearing. However, this whole machine was designed for the bigger one, so some of the holes are the wrong size. Um, it will mean that we don't slosh water around so much because there's not so much violent force pushing it. But actually, for that stage that tips the first jug, there's not enough mass in this one, so we need to make a few modifications throughout the whole machine. I've also put some foam dampers on those pushers so they don't creep, which is just a loop of foam that just means that they're not so free moving despite having put bearings in there. Yep, that seems to work pretty well. Made a little thing and stuck it in the top of that hole so the smaller ball bearing doesn't come through before the seesaw's finished, so it basically has to go all the way to the bottom. I've also done that on the next stage as well, which is the stage that pushes the jug that pushes the water. And you'll notice it goes down freely now. I've added this box on, which I can put some more mass in as well if I need to, to offset the weight of the water. 
and that balances it quite well, which means it doesn't move down quite so violently and slosh water everywhere. You'll notice also that the jug actually stays in position now, so it empties completely and it locks down once it's been pulled. I've done this with basically a magnet, which faces another magnet attached to the bracket, so it kind of locks into place there, and that means that it won't violently flick back up again and throw the water in the air, hopefully. I've done that to both jugs, so they've both got these magnetic locks that gives it a definite sort of robotic action, and that means that jug is going to get completely empty before it moves on, rather than flying back and flinging liquid in the air that's still getting poured, so I'm pretty happy with that. We may need to adjust the position of the jug back and forth in its cradle so it doesn't over pour the mug as it comes along. And we might also need to put some mass on the back there so it doesn't pour as quick. But we can't really do that without the water in, so that's going to need testing. Pretty happy with the way it looks though. So let's uh, run the whole thing and see what happens. Cool, look at that jug action. And that jug action. We forgot to brew the tea. Tea bags come in a box like this, not sponsored, and the tea bag is on the end of this bit of wire now on the bottom of the elevator shaft. So what's supposed to have happened is the ball comes in, pushes the tea bag down and dunks it, the ball exits and it comes out again, but you need to brew tea for more than one second or whatever. At the moment it just goes in and pops out as the machine's running. So I was going to have an escalator that went up and then a massive helter skelter that took ages for the ball to come back down again. That's quite a big thing to build and I've built quite a lot already in this. So what I'm going to do is just use an electronic timing gate. So I've got one of these infrared ready-made sensor modules that's got a little adjuster on it for ad adjusting the proximity and that's going to sense when that gate before the lift gets triggered. That's plugged into an Arduino and there's a little servo that opens the elevator door. So basically we'll set up a timer on there, so the ball falls into the elevator, it dunks the tea bag, at the moment it only waits 5 seconds but we'll turn that up to brew the tea, and then it pops out again and the rest of the machine continues. So I'm pretty happy with that. Right, you've heard of T800, well this is T800. And we're in my kitchen where we do food projects like using meat instead of motors. It's time for tea. Right, kettle water goes in here, so we get a nice hot cup of tea. Hope it doesn't melt the plastic, should be alright in that jug. And we'll put a splash of milk in here as we want it in our tea. That's probably enough. Then all we have to do to make the tea is put this ball bearing in the top. Let's see if it works. It's a bit splashy still. Oh, right, the tea bag's in. While the tea's brewing, I just want to tell you that all the designs I do are open source for most of my projects and they're all on my GitHub. And they're not just STLs, they're actual solid models you can put into CAD and edit as if you drew them and also publish all the code. So if you'd like to support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership, then patrons and YouTube channel members actually get a separate cut of the video with most of the ads stripped out, which is quite good as well. And it doesn't cost very much, so check those things out in the description. I've also got a Discord where you can discuss some of the projects. Right, I think it might be time for the tea. Milk. And the tea's made. Yeah, we have spilled a bit, but apart from that, it works fine. Yeah, we might need to implement a drip tray of some sort, but apart from that, it's made the perfect cup of tea.